Watch closely as the show is not over. If you will, please move in closer. In today's spookerific review, we're going to be continuing our looks at McFarlane Toys Clive Barker's The Infernal Parade, as we have a look today at the Sabbaticus, Bleb and Healer. figure out how big the sabbaticus is we're going to go ahead and use the tape measure starting from the tail and working to the other end of the cart that's about right you're looking at about it was about 6.8 to about 7 inches i didn't hold the settings the numbers that i usually do just to quickly figure out how tall the figure stands and we can stop it right there from the bottom to the top, the Sabbaticus stands at 5.8 inches in centimeters. You're going to be looking at 14.7. Now, I'm no mind reader, but I'm sure somebody has asked me why can't I show the story that comes included with these figures. And the reason for that, this is the insert that comes inside the clear clamshell. We open this up and you can see an extensive story inside. Now, this is just this figure. Now, you can imagine, then, if I was to sit here and read every single one of these, it would be pretty difficult, and it would take up a lot of time, time that you guys probably need to have to go elsewhere. And just to show you, too, it would be pretty hard to pause or to hold up each one of the sides here, each one of the many different pages, for you guys to be able to read it. So I would say the best bet, if you guys are interested in reading up more about the Infernal Parade, is probably to check out... Maybe go online and you could just simply type in the Infernal Parade. And uh, there's probably somewhere where you'd be able to read up on the entire story. I don't even think McFarland Toys on their website has the full story. Probably just a, a quick summary for each character. So that's the reasoning why I haven't showed any of the story for this. It's simply just for the fact that it would take up a lot of time. And you guys have to be somewhere else, I'm sure. Now to show you where I've left off so far of the three figures that we were looking at, even though we haven't really looked at the Spaticus just yet, we bring in the other figures. Now, even though I had Mary Slaughter, what I believed facing the wrong way initially, putting the Spaticus in the middle, they're, they're all facing the, the correct way. And the idea with these being that the hitch and the trailer portion can mix and match. So if you, for example, wanted to have, say, the Spaticus on this side, it would simply just be a case of attaching it to the side that you want and then just going like that which i guess makes now sense i didn't have it facing the wrong way it seemed as if i did but i didn't end up having it the wrong way when we looked at mary slaughter but you can see how you can mix and match and have these and hopefully not in the process of doing so pop any of the wheels off but you can have the infernal parade looking pretty cool and that's only with three figures down so far so there's a little bit of assembly that's required. Uh, the frustration comes in putting these blasted tires on. These wheels are pain in the you know where. You have to take these metal rods and feed them through. And then once you have them on either side, you have to try your best to attach these smaller wheels. The larger wheels don't seem to be as much the problem. I can usually get those on pretty easily. In case you are wondering, the little spoke area here is of a slightly softer plastic. But the front wheels, boy oh boy, those are a nightmare to put on. And quite frequently, you may have already seen it over the course of the two videos, but this video may not be any different. These tires pop off way too frequently. There's just not enough. I find there's not enough pressure you can really add to them to put the tires properly in place. So the wheels will pop off 
probably rather more frequently than you really would want. Uh, for the rest of the figure, what you're going to have to do is you take the Sabaticus creature and it pegs in. There's a peg on there, on sticking out right here, and there's a peg right here. And you attach the two front the two front feet into those pegs. A lot of this is sort of just a balancing act, as much as something you would see in the circus. Uh, then you have to take the feet or legs here of the stool in which one of the clowns is standing atop of, and it pegs into these three open these three open holes here. Then the tail of the spaticus at times does still peg off, uh, come unpegged here, unfortunately, but its tail wraps around one of the legs of the stool. And then, like I said, you gotta have to put everything together. It's a balancing act, and often at times I've had the tail pop off. I then put the tail on, then the leg of the stool pops out. I have to readjust that. Like I said, it's just, it, it goes with the territory of a McFarlane figure release. I mean, if you've collected enough of these over your, over the years, you kind of already know um, you have to put one thing in place, then something else pops out. A very delicate procedure to get everything together. But the end result is an actually uh, uh, infernal parade character that I think is so far my favorite. Now, it, the packaging says this is the Spaticus uh, Bleb and Healer. Now, if you think about that, Spaticus is the creature, then there's Bleb and Healer. You can't help but notice that there's only one clown here. So where is the other clown? Unfortunately, it is inside the clear stomach here of the Sabaticus creature. It's very hard to make out exactly what's in there. So doing my best, I've got my phone light here. I'm going to just put it next to it in the hopeful means that I can actually show you there's something inside there. It doesn't do the greatest of jobs. I guess it could have been a little clearer, but then you wouldn't want the creature to be completely clear and translucent. Yeah, you can't quite make out what exactly is in there, but I'm going to assume it's either Bleb or Healer. I'm not really sure which one has been engulfed by the beast, but it, one of them is definitely inside the stomach here. To the credit of McFarlane Toys, they've done a good job of transitioning the color of the fur of the creature into the open area that's more the clear translucent plastic. They've still got the sculpting of the fur there, so it does still look as if it could be fur, but again, giving it that clear look gives you that sense that, you know, there you can see something in there, even though you can't quite make out exactly what it is. The creature almost kind of looks like, to me, the Krampus. A cross between, like, a critter or crite, and the Krampus sort of kind of gives me this feeling of what the Sabaticus might be. Down below, we've got the Bleb and Healer Marquee, even though one of them, unfortunately, sadly, is inside the creature. And then we flip it around to the other side, you've got the Sabaticus. And I'm assuming that's the way it's pronounced, unless it's Sabaticus, I'm assuming it's Sabaticus. It's a really neat sculpted looking character. Like I said, a kind of a combination between a Krite and the Krampus. I get more of the Krampus vibe from it, from kind of almost having the curled horns. The scaled, fanned, thin here almost kind of reminds me as well like a gremlin. So it's kind of like a mogwai crossed with a Krite, crossed with a Krampus. And you get this splendid looking creature. Now, creature aside, you've got one of the clowns here looking inside the gullet of the creature, the monster. And I don't know which one this would be, whether it be Bleb or uh, Healer. Of course, reading the story would tell us uh, exactly probably who is who. One thing you can probably make out, however, though, is the nod away face there of the last surviving performer. Probably indicating to me that he has made several attempts to reach his head inside the mouth of the creature to retrieve his fallen comrade, which is way back here. I like the proportion, and it does even make the creature look much bigger than he ends up being because you've got a smaller character looking inside. This is exactly what I'm talking about by balancing act. You get the tail in place, and then it's probably going to, yeah, it's going to pop the stool out. It's frustrating, I will admit, but it goes with the territory. If you've collected McFarland toys, it's sort of what you come to expect by this point. Now, there is a little bit of assembly, but really, the assembly, or I should say the articulation on these figures, is few and far between. He does have posability technically in the arms and in the head, 
but why would you want to move these? I don't really get the notion for why you would want to be bending the arms. Um, the At least I think there's a bend in the arm, maybe not so much on that side, but there is on this side here. And then there appears to be articulation here on the creature's arm. But really, what are you going to do with it? The arms are already plugged into the cart here, so there's really nothing you can move to it. Again, this is one of those examples where McFarlane sort of has dictated to you exactly how the figure is supposed to look. I would never even really challenge the idea that I would want to change what this is right now. It looks good the way it is. I just don't get why you would need to put posability in something that really is intended solely as a statue. I would say the Sabaticus is my favorite figure from this line, and is also the most frustrating to put together. It's ironic because there seems less moving components to this one than, say, the likes of Mary Slaughter. Mary Slaughter had a little bit more intricate assembly requirements, but yet this one is a little bit more frustrating because once you get something lined up, say, for example, the leg of the stool, you'll find that the tail does pop off the beast. You fix the tail, and another leg of the stool will pop off, all the while still having the ongoing frustrations of having the tires, the wheels, popping off of the cart. It is definitely one of the more excruciating experiences of putting together, but it goes without saying, that's what McFarlane toys are all about. They never give you instructions either. At times, you just have to keep looking on the back of the packaging, gauging where exactly things are supposed to go together. This one's pretty much more straightforward, say, than the likes of Mary Slaughter. Mary Slaughter, you sort of had to figure it out almost like a puzzle. Where exactly does this go? Where exactly does that go? This one is a little bit more straightforward, but a little bit more frustrating as well. The payoff, though, is it's a nice-looking creature, sort of a combination of many different creatures that I mentioned in the course of this review, and I like the fact that there's one fallen, one engulfed clown that's inside the belly of the beast, which is a nice touch by incorporating that clear belly and nicely transitioned into the paint of the, the rest of its body. Clearly, I'm guessing that the body of the beast was probably clear plastic, and then they've just painted the areas that aren't supposed to be seen. And speaking of seeing, even though you really can't quite make out where Bleb or Healer is inside the stomach, we all kind of know, looking at this diorama, and that's what we can really call it, a diorama, you sort of can know how this story has played out. It's unfortunate for one of them, I would just say for the surviving clan, probably don't want to stick your head in the the mouth of the Sabaticon too much. I think that's probably a bad idea. Uh, in the meantime, though, a great looking figure. I said Sabaticon. It's actually the Sabaticus or Sabaticus. Not quite sure how you would pronounce that, but it's definitely by far one of my favorites so far of the Infernal Parade. Now, we're only about halfway through this carnival as we still have a look at three figures coming up onto this channel. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. That will guarantee you that when the other three videos go up, you'll at least be aware you'll be in the know. You can also hit that bell notification that's just below this video that will turn on your notifications. And while you're at it, why not swing by the homepage and check out the videos while you're there. See if there's anything you may have missed along the way. Even though we're halfway through, or about, I guess we're more so two-thirds of the way through Spottober, I can rest assured and tell you guys that there's still a ton of videos coming your way. So if you like the spooky stuff, there's going to be a lot more coming your way as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.